Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Cheating Stories. If you like the video please like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started with the first story. My girlfriend of 5 years cheated. For most of our relationship, we lived together, having lived in 3 different countries together, which amounted to about 3 and a half years. The rest of our time together, we managed a long-distance relationship. The last time I saw her was for her mother's birthday. I had a great relationship with her family, and a band of mutual friends and I traveled together to their hometown for a three-day visit. Since the first evening, she displayed troubling, almost hysterical behavior. She asked for attention every second, made an issue out of everything I did, including paying attention to and having conversations with her parents. Her sexual drive was higher than it has ever been, to the point of me not liking it because of how forced it felt. Long story short, I caught her seeking attention from other men before, which is basically cheating. However, I made the mistake of taking her back once she cried her way back to me, denying she did anything more than texting. I wanted to believe her, but I never truly did. On the second night of that birthday visit, her phone was blasting with messages overnight. She was sound asleep. A guy who she supposedly blocked had been messaging her, and she had changed her password. I packed my stuff, left a single message, I know. I left the apartment, headed straight to the airport, and flew home. I never spoke to her again, and God knows she tried. It's been 7 months. I am single and at peace now. Good for you, op. That's called having self-respect and dignity. Next time, though, when someone displays red flags of being a possible cheater, drop them immediately. Edit to add. Red flags include, but are not limited to, 1. Male friends they are too close to and party with. 2. Unwarranted contact with exes. 3. Flirting and constantly making eye contact with other men. 4. Calling your boundaries, too controlling. 5. Having lunches and drinks alone with male co-workers. 6. Refusing transparency and being secretive with devices. Lol, an ex of mine met almost all of the red flag criteria you posted and more. One time, I was organizing my storage shed at my parents' place, and she threw out all of my letters and other stuff from previous girlfriends. Ones that treated me way better than she did, I might add. Her hypocrisy was evident in that she could get rid of my stuff yet still keep stuff and be in contact with her previous guy. I openly told her I didn't like it, but I wasn't going to stop her. Just be open with me, that's all I asked. Well, she started sneaking around behind my back. I wasn't dumb and new, I just had no hard evidence to call her out, but there are always tells if you pay attention. When I did, I kicked her to the curb. She then claimed I was controlling, I never stopped her from doing anything which was her way of demonizing me to make herself feel better because, in her eyes, me not liking her talking and seeing her ex was controlling. But her turfing all of my stuff, telling me I can't drink soda anymore, and trying to take over control of my home is not. Story 2. Aida for not telling my friend, sooner that her boyfriend is cheating on her? My friend, let's call her Emma, F24, and I, F24, had been friends for approximately 6 years. We met each other in school and formed a friendship group with four other girls. At around the four-year mark of our friendship, Emma got into a relationship with a guy, let's call him Alex, who was a good friend of mine. Now, their relationship was on and off again for the majority of the two years that they were together, and it is something that myself and the other girls just got used to. Whenever they broke up, it was just a matter of time before they made up. At around the six-year mark of my friendship with Emma, I started to notice that Emma would constantly pick on my insecurities and get the other girls to join in. She knew I was struggling with my mental health but thought it would be a good idea to make fun of me about it. At one point, I had a panic attack in a restaurant where we were having lunch, and she simply started laughing at me. She would also constantly tell the other girls not to invite me to social events because she just doesn't like me. Of course, this absolutely broke my heart because we had been friends for so long, but I am not someone to beg for a friendship. As such, I texted her one day, telling her that this friendship was not going anywhere, and that I wished her all the luck in her life. Then, I proceeded to remove her number from my phone. As for the other girls in the group, I only stayed friends with one of them who had always been supportive of me. At the point in which I had ended my friendship with Emma, Alex and Emma had just gotten back together. Now, remember I had said that Alex and I were good friends, such good friends that he confided in me that he is cheating on Emma with a couple of other girls. I told him immediately that this is wrong and he should know better than to sleep with other girls when he is in a relationship. However, he simply brushed me off and told me that it's just a guy thing. I felt guilty knowing this information without telling Emma about it. But at this point, we were not friends, and she was just a mean girl who made jibes at me on social media, so I left it. 
A couple of months had passed, and Emma and Alex were still together. At this point, the guilt was eating me up, and I knew I just had to clear my conscience. I confided in the one girl who I was still friends with in the friendship group and told her to tell Emma about the situation. A couple of days later, I received countless texts from an unknown number telling me that I am a horrible person. It didn't take long to figure out that this was Emma, and she proceeded to say how I am an evil person for knowing about the cheating and not saying anything sooner. She said that even if we were not friends, it's a decent thing to do. So my question is, I Ada for not telling my friend sooner that her boyfriend is cheating on her? For someone who just recently experienced my first panic attack while holding my daughter in my arms, no and F her. You cut her off when she became a mean girl. Then later find out your male friend is a cheater, you should cut him off too. Why should you continue to help her out if she's constantly bullying you online? Yeah, nope. Now, if you guys just got into a fight and you cut her off, yeah, maybe then tell her. Actually, why continue being friends with the guy who is the boyfriend of such an odd girl? Even if he's faithful, I would go LC with him. If he likes her, I cannot like him. Maybe it's a childish solution, but why stay around such toxic people? In this situation, it seems like there are multiple layers of conflict and hurt. It's understandable that you felt guilty about not telling Emma about her boyfriend's infidelity, but it's also important to consider the context of your relationship with her and the toxic behavior she exhibited towards you. It's not your responsibility to fix or save a relationship that isn't your own, and it's important to prioritize your own well-being and boundaries. It's also important to consider how telling Emma about the cheating would have affected your own mental health and the potential backlash from her, given the way she had treated you in the past. No, actually, you were the friend of her boyfriend that trusted you when she was just a mean ex-friend. What you did was totally correct, and she should have been more grateful than angry with you. Since she bullied you, the time to tell her would be in a group setting. Hey Emma, your boyfriend Alex told me he has been cheating on you for the last year. Then walk away. NTA. At least she knows now about cheating. You try to be a good person, but she is just not worth it. I think we can all agree that Emma is an awful person. The only thing you did wrong is wait so long and finally tell someone. You felt guilty not because you weren't friends anymore, you felt guilty because it would have been the right thing to tell her right away. Cheating is only possible if people keep their mouths shut. Waiting for so long was wrong, but telling her was right. You did the right thing eventually, so you're not an asshole. I guess if Emma would have been such a cunt towards you, you'd have told her right away. Bullies can get f she was horrible to you and recruited others to treat you poorly, and you're supposed to feel sorry for her? Forget that. I'd just send her a message and say, you're lucky I told you now with how much of a bully you were, but replace bully with something nastier. Let her lie in the bed she made. I honestly don't see you winning in this situation at all. If you told her sooner, she'd just claim that you're being vindictive and lying, and since you told her later, you're being accused of being horrible. It's a lose-lose situation. Story 3. My oversimplification of being cheated on. Backstory. Over a year ago, I, M34, discovered that my wife, F30, was cheating on me. Immediately after I found out, she said that she was done with him and wanted to stay together. However, it took me about four days to discover that she was continuing to contact him and that she planned on leaving me for him. I did everything in my power to save the marriage and fought to keep her. Now, imagine you are getting out of your car, and you drop your cell phone. Your immediate reaction is to try to catch it, but all it does is cause you to bat your phone away, causing it to skip across the parking lot at velocities that come close to the speed of sound. I always said I wouldn't stick around if I was cheated on, and I think that's generally how most of the public feels. Unfortunately, there is a knee-jerk, cell phone falling, reaction a lot of people have. It's not easy to throw away an eight-year marriage on a random Tuesday afternoon. I mean, even after dating for a year, there is a sort of infrastructure that is built up, and I can now fully understand how an otherwise self-respecting, mature person is going to immediately try to catch that cell phone. Anyways, I'm not sure when it happened, but my mind caught up to reality, and I am no longer willing to entertain getting back together. The best advice I can give to someone is to wait it out. Don't make a commitment in either direction until your rational brain can catch up to your reactionary brain. Thank you for watching the guys. If you liked it, please a like and make sure to comment to tell us what you would have done in this situation. Also make sure to check the description box if you want to have better relationships or lose that extra weight you can't get rid of. And if you want some videos like this, make sure to check one of these. See you soon.